many dead friends. Glock twins, dance like Rick Fox. Beastie grown men, zone ain't no cop out. Free my nigga box, stand her. Alright, what's up y'all? It's your girl Classic Coco with another episode of Let's Be Real the Podcast. And I got my special guest here, Mr. J. Way Sosa, coming to you today on this episode. So what's up? So tell the people who you are, what you do, where you're from. What's up, Mr. Kid? I'm J. Way Sosa from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm from the north side, from here in Valley. I make a whole lot of rap music. Feel? Hold a rap chat. Okay, so how did your how did your childhood in Hennepin Valley kind of inspire who you are today in your style of music? Well, really, honestly, I ain't gonna count like shit. It's me just being, you know, what I'm saying, in the street a little bit. That that inspired the period because I don't be on all the outside of town just so you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Hennepin Valley just you know that's where my heart is. So in the end, you know, just me just being like in and out the streets a little bit of my life, a lot of all my life, really. That's what really kind of inspired me, things that I've seen, things that I've done. Right, right. So, I know J-Way Sosa isn't your real name, so what kind of inspired your name J-Way Sosa? Shit. Well, me and my dog was on the, on the green box. We were just being kids, high, and actually just gave each other nicknames. They said, my name is going to be J-Way, so in the end, I went to Facebook. I put J-Way Sosa. I put Sosa on the back of it because I like the way it sounded, and then mm. I stuck with it, feel me? Yeah. Or stand on that. Okay, yeah. So, what do you feel like kind of separates you from other artists in Charlotte? Man, niggas ain't keeping up with me, man. They're not like, keeping up. Nah, versatility is not there. Like, when it come down to me just being able to just make music, I don't feel like no artist. It's really, it's really, it's like on my level right now as far as the city. And when it come down to it, you know, I've been leading the way with a lot of the Charlotte culture for a long time. So. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't really like look into the Charlotte music history and not find J-Way Sosa. So in the end, I feel like that speak by. So we're just going to keep on continue to recreate, continue to just give good music, good quality, you know, solid music. Right. So on that note, like, how do you kind of feel about the Charlotte industry as far as music right now? Like, what's your opinion on how that's buzzing? Charlotte going good right now. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we got some majors in the city right now, you know what I'm saying? So when it come down to it, that's gonna be even more pressure off of the city for people to take it serious and just actually look at us like we, you know what I'm saying, are marketable, you know? We are marketable and then in the end, you know, it just come back to, you know, that's being from Charlotte. So in the end, we, I think we got a down pat right now. Right. Just gotta keep going, you feel me? Charlotte culture has definitely been identified, you feel me? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you get a lot of support from other artists, or do you kind of feel like it's a lot of competition with other with other artists as well? Man, this shit's still a crab in a bucket type shit. Like, right. no sugar coating on it. Like, when it come down to it, like you know, you still got that type of environment in this city. But at the same time, you know, you still got a whole lot of artists who you know kind of find their way through the crack. You feel me? Right. In the end, you know. It's all about what you're doing with your with your with your music. You gotta push it. You gotta keep going. You gotta give them consistency. You feel me? So right. That's what I'm doing right now. Right. So if you could use three words to describe who you are and your music, what three words would you use? Versatile, raw, and hard. Yeah. Okay. Straight like that. Yeah. So you get that rawness from like a lot of things that you've been through. What's kind of been an event in your life that has kind of sparked like the rawness and hardness from that's developed within you? It's been a whole lot of different things that come over in the past, you know what I mean? Like from the childhood to me being a teenager, you know, just doing things that I wasn't supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Just looking back on some of the, you know what I'm saying, situations where I could have probably lost my life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just some of the things that I, that I put myself into, I probably could have avoided. But, you know, they all made me who I am today, so I just be thanking God that I'm here to be able to tell my story, you feel me? Right, exactly. So, I know you just released Black Friday. What kind of inspired that project? And personally, what is your favorite song and video from that project? Black Friday, I just really wanted to show them that I'm still consistent. I just want to keep giving them music, you know what I'm saying? It was another little project for me to just, you know, let the fans have, because I haven't been releasing a whole lot of music, so I've been, mm -hmm. you know, kind of slacking on that end, so I was like, yeah, now nah, I'm just going to give them a whole nice solid body of work, bigger ranking hooked up with me on it, and um, my favorite song out there type is probably going to be Street Law. Mm -hmm. um, 
um, I've been telling everybody that it's because Street Law really in the end, it's just, you know, one of my favorites out of the table. This is the vibe that it gives me, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So if y'all ain't got Black Friday, make sure y'all go check their Black Friday out right now, all right. platform. Right. That's the next question, too. What kind of inspires Street Laws? Now, street Laws is just, you know, one of them songs where it was just like, you know, we still living on principles, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and, you know, it's just certain things that we abide by, you feel me? Mm -hmm. so, Shit, I'm from here in Valley, I'm from Charlotte, man. Shit, y'all can go check the background, it's a whole lot going on, you feel me? Right. So. Right, y'all, so what's that, you know, it's, I'm south side over here, mm -hmm. exit four. Yeah. <laughs> so, we two totally. Nation four. Nation's four, fours all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, how has the reaction been from your supporters around the world and just seeing your progress, like, within your career? How's that feeling been? It's just, it's just, you know, it's a blessing, honestly. I just be feeling like, you know, I could be stuck in my room still with nobody listening to my music but my family, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, you know, I remember them days when it was just me and my dogs were just only the ones that had my mixtape. So it's just kind of amazing to me for me to just see my music being played in Israel, my music being played in Egypt. Right. You know what I'm saying? In right. these different little places, you know what I'm saying? I ain't never even been there. So. That's just you know, big ups to everybody that's out of the country that's that's streaming my music. Big ups to everybody that's streaming my music. Period. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's crazy. Different cultures, different geographical areas. Like you know, you never want to be mainstream or not even mainstream, but just local. Mm -hmm. And that's a big growth. Right. So, what do you feel like has been your difficult ob like your most difficult obstacle being in um, your career right now? Just kind of being one foot in the game and one foot in the street, you know what I'm saying? Like me just being actually like in the industry in some kind of way, and then also still having to, you know, go and take risks on my own. You know right. what I'm saying? And do things that I had to do to make sure I, you know, feed the family and make sure I get that rent paid. You feel right? Me? Exactly. Because in the end, we getting paid from the music, and I still just, you know, had that little. Had that, I, get, I wouldn't call it a burden on my back. I just, I had that little monkey on my back the mm -hmm. way I would still find myself doing some of the old things and I just kind of got to get away right. from all that, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, what do you kind of feel like are key factors um, that you would give someone who's pursuing a career in music? 100%, get yeah, that shit 100%, like, if you're gonna rap, you gotta rap. If you know you good, you good. Like, mm -hmm. It's one thing to be good, but it's another thing to kind of actually 100% be fully into this. And, and get something out of it, you know what I'm saying? So, you really ain't gonna see nothing out of it unless you really fully commit to it, you know what I'm saying? Right. So really, that's where I'm at right now. I'm fully committed to it now, and um, I know for a fact that I'm gonna see a big change. Right, yeah. right. So if you, okay, on that note, if you could take just one thing, I know you said consistency, I know definitely marketing goes behind a career. Definitely, facts. If you could just choose one, for the rest of your career to stay on, whether it was consistency, marketing, your versatility, mm -hmm. what would you choose? Marketing. That's a good answer. You can market whatever. Exactly. Like, yeah. So you find your if you find your marketing niche and you find that class that want to be able to take and you know, absorb what you got, they want to consume your product, then mm -hmm. that's what you do. You stick to that. You feel me? Right. So, yeah, because you can be consistent over here, but you ain't consistently marketing, so. It ain't gonna really get to nobody. You be like I was saying, you be playing your music for everybody else in your family. You feel me? Like them, they gonna be telling you. Right. You the hardest. They gonna be like, yeah, yeah. They, but everybody else can be like, who is this? Who is this guy? Because you gotta have your what marketing. What? <laughs> so I know you work with a lot of artists. You know, I've been on YouTube doing my little research. I know you worked with um Lil Baby Boosie. What are some other artists that you haven't worked with yet that you would like to work with in your career? There's a few other artists I like to work with. Um, I can't even really get the name of everybody right now. Mm -hmm. um, I ain't gonna lie. Um, I, I love to work with my boy Future, Young Thug, Drake, of mm -hmm. course. You know what I'm saying? In the end, they, I feel like those they're not too far from my lane anyway. Right. Um, but you know, it's a, it's a, it's a lot of artists I like to work with. You feel me? It's yeah. a lot of artists that actually come and tap in too, um, or that you know just hit me up whenever they're in the city too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So. You know what I'm saying? That's just all real. Like, that just come from me being, you know what I'm saying, in the street or whatever. You know what I'm saying? 
I ain't never really got to be all the way about music all the time with some right. of my artists. Some of my, some of my rap friends, you know what I'm saying? It ain't always just about rap, you feel me? So right. like, well, so what are some hobbies that you are interested in other than making music? Like, would you like to do fashion, real estate, production? Um, really all of the above, mm -hmm. honestly. Um, I got a short film that I'm really working on. I don't really want to tell the name of it. Mm -hmm. um, I want to work on that. That's so that's obviously on the production side. Other than that, you know, my merchandise, we got some good merchandise coming up too as far as the Black, um, Black Friday. Then I also got another project shh, that's on the way. And, um, you know, we're just going to be pretty much, you know, gearing up for all that. And in the end, you know, I just contribute to everything that you was pretty much saying. Right. Me? So, real estate. We got a studio upstairs. Mm -hmm. So. Gotta have assets, yeah. you know, you can pass on generational wealth and everything. So, with my next question, I see that you have your chain, so <laughs> would you... <laughs> Wait, what did that say before I... Okay, the empire. The empire. Somebody I, told I, me that. I see money. I see money, okay. So, tell me about that. This shit started out the block. My dog facing, homie came up with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Check. They came up with it. They called me a long time ago, asked me to draw my belt. Yeah. I, Cause you know I can draw. Mm -hmm. you know, was, I drew a little logo. Or whatever, but I wasn't even actually a part of Ice and Money. Mm -hmm. but, you know, it was for a little minute. I was like, I was at my dog. I was like, bro, y'all need to let me. I be the face of this shit, bro. I'm the, I'm the artist, nigga. Like I'm letting them right. know, like, you know, bro, my music like that, bro. So I gave bro a CD. Shit, damn. Bro came back like, damn, bro. How you put that shit together like that, like yeah. for real, like. Mm -hmm. So shit, me and bro got them face. We was like that from that day. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. around big bro, shit. We start putting money behind this music shit. We start got them hitting the different cities and the different clubs and mm -hmm. rocking with the DJs. You know what I'm saying? Just gaining all these different people along the way. You right. know what I'm saying? And just, we here. Right. Yeah. So would you kind of want to take Icy Money and make that your own label or would you be open to signing with a label? I'm definitely open to signing, mm -hmm. but in the end, like, we already pretty much um, are running our operation over here um, to be able to generate revenue. So what we're looking for right now is the best situation that's going to come from what we generate. Right. And in the end, that's going to be from us to kind of like, you know, big everything up and be able to come in and say, hey, um, these numbers like this, so you already know what I'm asking for. In the end, it's gonna be more of a partnership than would it be, uh, you know, me trying to sign a 360 deal or anything of that sort, you feel me? I just feel like independently, an artist is pretty much gonna be able to have more say so when they come in popping, you feel what I'm saying? Right. You know, when they come in popping, you you, 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 you pretty much drawing a contract up, you feel me? Right. So, well, y'all, we about to take a quick break and we'll be right back. So, give him the curse swapper, curse for a hurt, yeah. I for an eye, if you die, then I die, get to gang pin a live street. Laws will abide. Street, laws will abide. Nigga, pull up, pass it out. Can't speak on murders when they slide. Um. All right, so we are back with the episode with J-Way Sosa. So, I, we were just talking about um, Icy Money and progressing into the future with a label. So I know that you talk a lot about numbers and you're very business oriented. Has that come from, you know, you growing up, you know, in the streets, you know, doing what you got you got to do, you know, support your family? Where does that kind of stem from? Because... I really don't even know, because I'm going to keep mm -hmm. it all the way real. Like, I've always been good with numbers. If you tell me your number right now, I can remember it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm just really good with numbers, period. You feel me? My grandma been like that. Mm -hmm. So, like, I guess that's why I get it from, you feel me? So, mm -hmm. like, that's what I, I feel like that come in, like, you know, me just being good with numbers and shit. Like, marketing and doing all this stuff right here, like, as far as, like, me figuring out that I know that I need to have numbers for me to be able to succeed in what I'm doing, I mean, that just come from me just just actually knowing that I want people to hear my music, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I had a couple little guys. Uh, big shout out to, you know, T, Miranda T. Pring. I ain't mm -hmm. gonna, uh, Lyric, man. If, if you know Lyric, then you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But Lyric do her thing with pretty much making sure the artists get paid. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. uh, from the biggest to the smallest, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So y'all just uh, stay in tune with, you know what I'm saying, your songs. Registering your songs. DDS media base, just find out what it is. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get into all that, but right. you know what's going on. Right. I know you're very probably serious about, you know, copywriting everything that you do. I ain't gonna lie, I don't copyright everything either. Mm -hmm. I don't copyright everything. I copyright my jewels, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I copyright the songs that I feel like gonna be the majors. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And in the end, uh, in the end, I gotta get out of that, though. I gotta copyright everything. Mm -hmm. Just run everything through the same system. Um, right. We get to that, though. Oh, uh, yeah. That. I definitely know, especially with, you know, because I'm big on black assets and, you know, us as black people definitely developing things that we can take into generational wealth mm -hmm. and that's definitely important and um i know let me tell you my favorite song i know you did a lot of class but that, with fatty p jumping okay. let me tell you <laughs> let me tell you a shout out to fatty p <laughs> now <laughs> that's my, my guy okay real street what? nigga too real for real, Stop playing. for real. look i Go hard, but we're not gonna get in that. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I know. Um, yeah, I know you work with a lot of you know different local Charlotte artists. What are your kind of Charlotte artists that you would really support? You know that you kind of work with too. She fed a P one of them. Oh, it's a lot of y'all. I was just telling you. Know, I rock with P. Shit. I really rock with. I ain't any, it ain't too many Charlotte artists that kind of like you know established as rapping right now that mm -hmm. I ain't really rocking with like that. Shit, I rock with Shadiz. I rock with. Uh, like shit, I'm trying to think of niggas' name. You got Per Town. Mm -hmm. You got. Uh, shit, I rock with Seven Up Chop. Mm -hmm. Shit, I be kind of be kicking it with Rich Dunk a little bit. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Shit. It's a couple goddamn. I, I can't really. I ain't finna get into naming everybody because yeah. I'm finna goddamn leave somebody else. So. Yeah, right. You don't want to listen. This is just off the top. Don't even feel no type of way, please. Nah, nigga know. <laughs> nigga know what's happening. Yeah. Shit. It ain't even. I ain't even. I ain't even, I ain't even finna uh, sugarcoat shit though. You feel me? Like shit. It's some. Other, it's some. It's some other shit. We we gonna address at a different time. You feel yeah. Me? Listen. But, you gotta you know, let it brew. Yeah. Let but it so, brew. But shit, so niggas know what's going on. Mm -hmm. When's your birthday? My birthday, August first. August first. Okay, so what? You're a Leo. Oh, you're a Leo. That that explains a lot. Yeah. That explains that bluntness and everything. Big Leo. Big Leo, for real. You don't play no games. So I feel you. I feel you. That's how you gotta be in, a, in especially with an industry like this. Real hard, real cutthroat. You know, with the entertainment industry. But um, so what can your Supporters kind of expect from you in 2020. A whole lot of music. I was just thinking like, damn, man, I gotta just get out way more music than I've been getting. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just because like I'm used to just dropping. Like, when I first really started getting on to this, I mm -hmm. started just dropping, just dropping, just dropping. I'm talking about single after single. I'm finna just get more into dropping music. Like you might mm -hmm. see three, four more tapes. Shit. Yeah. For sure. Definitely that. If I don't have to, drop three, four more takes and I won't. I just sort of speak on a business mind because if if one of if one of these takes pick up to where it's just mm -hmm. carrying over, then I'm gonna continue to, you know what I'm saying? Right. Press the issue on them. I wouldn't just keep dropping make I'm gonna just keep dropping music, you feel me? Like, same with the majors, you feel mm -hmm. Right beside these music. And then, like you said, it's not all about music. Mm -hmm. So you got your short film coming out. What if that pop off too? Short film popping. That shit definitely gonna pop. So I mean, it's gonna it's gonna get good traction and be able to move up to the next level. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, for sure. I'll be watching out for that shit too. Right. You know, I'm real excited. Real Charlotte shit. No cap. Can, do we get a little like what's it gonna be on? And that's in the box. That's in the in the box. It's gonna be a story. Like it's really like gonna be a story about you know what I'm saying a goddamn that like me. I'm saying it pretty much is different sides of Charlotte, you know what I'm saying? It just it's gonna have some faces in there that you are familiar with from the city. We're just gonna depict the city and we're just gonna give it a good storyline on it and you know mm -hmm. in the end. We're gonna see how everything play out. Right. Well, yeah, what? <laughs> so where can people find you, your music? 
your platforms, everything. My music everywhere right now. Um, I try to put it on all platforms so y'all can just go listen to it wherever you listen to it. Just search up J-Way Sosa. J-A-Y-W-A-Y-S-O-S-A. It's going to pop up. Oh, yeah. Let me ask one more I question. I ain't doing too bad on somebody. You can Google. Right, Google. <laughs> so, one more question. Where do you kind of see yourself in five to ten years? Five to ten years, man. I see myself definitely scoped to the game. Um, I, I see myself as a major part in the game, playing a major role, you know, definitely within the music, um, maybe also on the production side. Mm -hmm. um, but I know for a fact that I will be definitely standing in the music game very strong on ten toes. So, you know, how many plaques I have, who knows? Mm -hmm. So, Keep manifesting. Keep it attitude, too. Uh, for sure. For real, because so. that can definitely speed things up, God speed. Well, yes, y'all, thank you for joining our episode with Mr. J. Way Sosa. Follow him on all his platforms. Check out Black Friday, available now, Apple Music everywhere. And follow Let's Be Real, the podcast on Instagram at Let's Be Real, the podcast, L-E-T-Z-B-E-R-E-L, the podcast. And, yeah, thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Peace out. Nigga take off your top, ain't gon' take no rest uh, Roy Jones, I can't never beat my pants no. uh, I'ma stuff these skinnies with some goddamn bands Blue rest of die for